Hä? Oh. I spent all of last night smoking this pulled pork. It turned out juicy and tender. But during the cooking process, I started to wonder, what if? It's been a long night using our Napoleon bullet smoker, but we got beautiful, beautiful results. Let me get that busting butt out. Whoa. <laughs> so juicy, all that juice and that fat. Ow, it's still hot. Oh man, let me tell you how we made this beautiful Boston butt. I started yesterday, 24 hours ago, with this beautiful Boston butt. Nice fat cap on top and a lot of intramuscular fat. Then we started it seasoning it with our own homemade rub. The rub consisted of one part sugar, one part salt, one part paprika powder, one eighth part garlic powder, one eighth part onion powder and one eighth part of ground pepper. I gave it a good shake so all of the rub was mixed very well. Then we started rubbing our Boston butt with mustard. I needed to have a good heavy coat of mustard to make sure that rub will stick and we get a beautiful bark on our Boston butt. And now we are here after having it on the smoker for around 20 hours and letting it rest until we started this video until Marcin got hungry it's almost lunchtime let's take a closer look wow this looks fantastic it has that wiggle and it looks so juicy and tender it's like it's almost falling apart already there's probably not even going to be much pulling involved all right let's take the bone out and pull it apart That pulled pork turned out better than I could have dreamed of. It's juicy, it's tender, it falls apart. Absolutely fantastic. These guys are absolutely going to devour it. Let's build up the sandwiches. We're going to take some sesame buns. These are the nice and fluffy ones from the bakery. We'll slice fine some lettuce. Now to build up our bun, we're going to start with the heel. Put on some mayonnaise based sauce. In this case, I'm using Dolly sauce. I'm gonna put on a little bit of lettuce. And now it's time to put on the pulled pork. These are big guys. They're hungry guys. So they need a lot of pulled pork. A little bit of nappy barbecue sauce and the crown goes on. So while smoking that pulled pork last night, I got to thinking, what if we deep fry pulled pork? You see where I'm going with that? We tried frying every type of food already. We tried frying ribs, we tried frying steaks, and some of them turned out fantastic. I never thought about trying to fry pulled pork before, because how are you gonna do that? They're all strings. But if I'm not gonna deep fry it, then who's gonna try to? And who is going to make this an epic staple dish? So let's just do this. Let's just give it a try. It's a great experiment, right? But first, we're going to feed the workers. Wie was vegetariër? All right, it's game on. Let's make that deep fried pulled pork. I took out my pan, placed it on the sizzle zone, put in some oil, and started frying. And I let that pulled pork fry until it turned nice and crisp. Look at this stuff. It's super fluffy, airy, light. The pulled pork completely transformed into, well, this crispy thing. What once was juicy and tender is now crispy and crunchy. Mm. We might have something here. Mm. All right, let's cut it in half and give it a try. It's like eating the best part of fried fish. Mm. It's so super crunchy. 
This is just mind blowing. You can't make this better. Can't make it better. Dude, no, it's so good. You know me. I don't know, it's just, it's something new. I love it. All right, that was pretty good. Fluffy, light, airy, but I think we can do better. This master plan starts with making a roux. It requires a whole stick of butter. Let it melt in a hot pan. Then add all-purpose flour until you have a smooth consistency. And to that, add one and a half liters of chicken stock. Keep mixing and keep stirring until you have that smooth consistency again. Now it's done and we're going to take it off the grill. Look at that beautiful pulled pork. It's just waiting for our roux. Just drop it all in there and mix it up. If you like to, this is the moment where you can add extra flavor. I like to add some extra barbecue rub. Make sure you mix everything very well. And when that's done, take it out of the container and place it onto a big sheet of aluminum foil and spread it out as thin as you would normally have a burger. Cut the aluminum foil and place all of it in the fridge for at least six hours. For this next level pulled pork, we're going to need a next level barbecue sauce. We'll start with a quarter cup of ketchup, a quarter cup of sugar, one tablespoon of French mustard, one tablespoon of sweet soy sauce, otherwise known as ketchup manis, and two teaspoons of Worcester sauce. Set it on the sizzle zone and let it come to a boil. And once you have that beautiful syrupy bubble, it's done and you pour it in a jar, lock it up and set it aside for when our ultimate pulled pork is done. After six hours in the fridge, your pulled pork and roux should look like this, nice and firm. I'm going to use a burger ring to press out that beautiful patty. And look at it, we got a nice shape, we got a lot of pulled pork and now we're going to stuff it with a slice of cheese. That's right, this is some young Gouda cheese. I'm going to use a smaller ring to press out the same form. We'll place it in between the patties and press the patties until they connect and form up nicely. Now we are going to make a breading station. Three plates, one for eggs, one for breadcrumbs, and one for all-purpose flour. Beat the eggs until they're loose. Now dip the pulled pork patty in the all-purpose flour, dust it off, dip it in the eggs, and dip it in the breadcrumbs. And now we ended up with one of the best looking deep fried patties you've ever seen. Wow, we just created the perfect shape to deep fry pulled pork. This is an epic way and it can easily be prepared up front. You can put this in a freezer even and then like a week later, you can pull this out, deep fry it, and you got the perfect snack. Let's start frying. Slowly letting our pulled pork patty slip into the oil as it's happily frying on our sizzle zone of the Napoleon Prestige Pro. We're letting it fry at a temperature of 180 degrees until it's nice and golden brown, which should take around eight minutes. And when it's done, we're setting it on a cooling rack letting the fat drip out. Time to build our burger. We'll start with the heel of the bun. Cut the bun in half, drizzle on some of the best mayonnaise, some fresh chopped lettuce, the fried pulled pork patty, that beautiful tooth crackling sweet sauce, and finally our deep fried pulled pork to finish it off and give it its final crunch. Put on the crown and our burger is done. How did this happen? Man, I got this nice shirt on. Finally, I get to wear it with the beautiful sunshine and then I mess it up. Well, never mind. We created this beautiful thing and if you look at it, it has everything you want. It has that sour, it has that sweetness, it has a crunch, it has juiciness, and most of all, it has beautiful smoked pork in it. So this can only be a good thing, right? Mm. Huh? Mm. Oh, it has so many different textures. This has everything. I'm blown away because what I was expecting is to get more, more of a, I don't know, a heavy bite. Like it, when you bite into a burger, you, you bite into a burger patty. This is so perfect. Well, this is more soft. It's, it's, it's like pulled pork, only then there's some creaminess holding it together. And then as we have a croquette. It's a, a bit similar, but this is the best croquette I ever tasted. Morrison and I debated if we needed to put in the young Gouda cheese, which is really light, or a heavier cheese, like a cheddar. 
We decided on the younger cheese, but on hindsight, I would now go for the cheddar because the young cheese, it's creamy, it's soft, but the flavor's not there. But oh my God, this is a feast. It's kind of an interesting sandwich. It's unlike anything I had before. And that's saying something. Morrison, yep. what if we start a restaurant? Deep fried pork, anything. I enjoyed eating this sandwich. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because you gotta try this at home, you know. This is need, something you need to do this weekend. It's got to happen. Put it on your list, get the groceries and start doing it. Start making that pulled pork. You're gonna have a lot of fun and you're gonna end up with a delicious recipe and a delicious dish. If you enjoyed it, then let us know. Leave us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then, eet smakelijk and keep on grilling. That's right. It's lekker, huh? I want to say something else. What, why do you want to say? There's no way you ever finish a whole pulled pork by yourself. So you always have a leftover. So you've got to try it. No. You just got to try it. There's no way somebody mm. finished pulled pork in one day. No. No way. This is, this is the leftover um, um, fried pulled pork, bowl, pulled pork balls. Pulled pork balls. Try them. This is nice. They're yeah, also really good. I could have a beer with this. Mm. This is the best bitter ball I ever tasted. Yeah. Deep fried pork balls. We got half our menu. No. For the Dutch pork fry. Everything pork. Everything pork, that's the name. Everything, Everything pork. No. Everything pork. It has to be fried. Everything. Yeah. The pork fry. Fries. Pork fries. Pork fry factory. Hey, we do not factory. I don't like the word factory. I don't like factories. Do you like factories? No, not anymore. No. See, Morris and I worked in factories. We enjoyed ourselves while we were there, but afterwards, if you ask us to go back. No. Nah. Nah.